Which of the following represent common vulnerability assessment techniques? Choose two. Is it A, penetration testing? Is it B, social engineering? Is it C, code review? Or is it D, patch management? You now have five seconds. And the correct answers are A and C, penetration testing and code review. Penetration testing simulates attacks to identify vulnerabilities. Code review examines software code for security flaws. And for the incorrect answer, social engineering manipulates users not directly uh, assessing vulnerabilities. An example would be a phishing attack, tricking users to reveal passwords. And D, patch management, assesses vulnerabilities but not an assessment technique. An example of that would be regularly updating software to fix known vulnerabilities. And for the next question of our exam, question number two. And the question states, what is the primary purpose of a honeypot? Choose one. Is it A, monitoring network traffic? Is it B, providing remote access? Is it C, collecting sensitive data? Or is it D, preventing malware infections? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is A, monitoring network traffic. A honeypot is a system designed to attract attackers for monitoring purposes. And for the incorrect answers, providing remote access uh, attracts attackers, not users. An example of that, of that would be a honeypot simulating an exposed SSH server. Collecting sensitive data is not the primary purpose, might collect attacker activities. And an example of that would be capturing malicious file downloads. And preventing malware infections is not the primary purpose of a honeypot. An example would be a honeypot luring malware to study its behavior. And for the next question of our exam, question number three. And the question states, what is the primary objective of a distributed denial of service or DDoS attack? Choose one. Is it A, gaining unauthorized access? Is it B, stealing sensitive data? Is it C, overloading a target system? Or is it D, executing malicious code? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C, overloading a target system. DDoS attack floods target with traffic to disrupt its services. And for the incorrect answers, gaining unauthorized access, different goal of an attack. An example would be attacking a log with stolen credentials. Stealing sensitive data, different type of attack. Uh, an example would be a hacker exploiting a vulnerability to steal credit card data. And executing malicious code, different type of attack. An example would be sending malware to infect a target system. And for the next question of our exam, question number four. And the question states, what is the purpose of a role-based access control, or RBAC? Choose one. Is it A, enforcing mandatory access controls? Is it B, limiting the number of, number of users? Is it C, assigning permissions based on roles? Or is it D, monitoring network traffic? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C, assigning permissions based on roles. Our back assigns permissions based on roles or responsibilities. And for the incorrect answers, enforcing mandatory access controls is a different access control concept. An example would be requiring multi-factor authentication to access a sensitive system. Um, limiting the numbers of users, not, it's not the primary purpose of RBAC. An example would be setting a maximum user limit for a shared resource. And monitoring network traffic is not the uh, purpose of access control. An example would be using a network intrusion detection system to monitor traffic. And for the next question of our exam, question number five. And the question states, what type of attack involves an attacker intercepting and altering communications between two parties? Choose one. Is it A, spoofing attack? Is it B, man-in-the-middle attack? Is it C, brute force attack? Or is it D, ransomware attack? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, man-in-the-middle attack, or M-I-T-M. Man-in-the-middle attack intercepts and alters communication. And for the incorrect answer, spoofing attack can involve impersonation, but not necessarily altering communication. An example would be sending emails that appear to be from a trusted source. A brute force attack involves trying all possible combinations. An example would be repeatedly attempting all possible passwords to gain access. And the ransomware attack involves encrypting data for ransom. An example would be encrypting a victim's files and demanding payment for this decryption. And for the next question of our exam, question number six. And the question states, what security standard focuses on the privacy of personal data and gives control to individuals over their data? Choose one. Is it A, HIPAA? Is it B, GDPR? Is it C, NIST or NIST? Or is it D, ISO 27001? 
You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, GDPR. GDPR, or General Data Protection Regulation, focuses on data privacy and protection. And for the incorrect answers, HIPAA, or Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, focuses on healthcare data. An example would be regulations for healthcare providers to safeguard patients' information. NIST, or National Institute of Standards and Technology, provides cybersecurity guidelines, but not focused on data privacy. An example would be NIST's cybersecurity framework for organizations. And ISO 27001 focuses on information security management systems. An example would be a company implementing ISO 27001 to protect sensitive data. And for the next question for exam, question number seven. And the question states, which of the following are cryptographic algorithms used for encryption and digital signatures? Choose two. Is it A, DES? Is it B, RSA? Is it C, SHA-256? Or is it D, ICMP? You now have five seconds. And the correct answers are B and C, RSA and SHA-256. RSA is an asymmetric algorithm used for encryption and digital signatures. SHA-256 hash is a hash function used for generating digital signatures. And for the incorrect answers, DES, or Data Encryption Standard, is an outda outdated symmetric encryption algorithm. An example would be encrypting data using uh, DES. And ICMP, or Internet Control Message Protocol, is a network protocol not related to encryption. Uh, one example of that would be a protocol used for diagnosing messages between devices. And for the next question for exam, question number eight. And the question states, what is the purpose of a Security Information and Event Management, or SIEM, system? Choose one. Is it A, monitoring physical access to facilities? Is it B, managing users' accounts and passwords? Is it C, centralizing and analyzing security logs? Or is it D, encrypting sensitive communications? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C, centralizing and analyzing security logs. SIEM collects, centralizes and analyzes security-related log data. And for the incorrect answers, monitoring physical access facilities is not the primary purpose of SIEM. An example of that would be using security cameras to monitor entry points. Managing users' accounts and passwords is part of identity and access management. An example of that would be resetting passwords and managing users' access permissions an encrypted sensitive communications uh, encryption focused solution it's an encryption focused solution not an a, not a siem an example of that we using uh, would be using ssl or tls to encrypt data during transmission and for the next question for exam question number 9 and the question states which of the following protocols are used for secure remote access to internal networks choose two is it a https is it b ftps is it c p p T P or is it D I P sec? You now have five seconds. And the correct answers are A and D. HTTPS and IPsec. HTTPS is an encrypted web communication and IPsec is a secure communication over IP networks. And for the incorrect answers, FTPS is a secure FTP but not used for remote access. An example of that would be transmitting files securely over FTP. And PPTP, historically used but not secure due to vulnerabilities. An example of that would be setting up a VPN connection using PPTP. And for the last question of our exam, question number 10. And the question states, what is a rogue access point in wireless networking? Choose one. Is it A, a wireless router provided by the ISP? Is it B, a malicious device impersonating a legitimate access point? Is it C, a network hub used for wired connections? Or is it D, a device that extends Wi-Fi coverage? In now five seconds. And the correct answer is B, a malicious device impersonating a legitimate access point. Rogue access point is an unauthorized device that mimics a legitimate access point. And for the incorrect answers, a wireless router is provided by the ISP. is not necessarily rogue. An example would be an ISP provided router for home Wi-Fi. A network hub used for wired connections is not related to wireless networking. Uh, an example of that would be connecting wired devices in a local area network. And the device that extends Wi-Fi cover coverage can be legitimate or rogue. 
An example of that would be using a range extender to increase Wi-Fi coverage. Ladies and gents, if you'd like to further support this channel, make sure to check my Udemy Instructor channel where I've posted a number of CompTIA exams. The exams consist of 270 questions each and are presented in greater detail. The link for my Udemy Instructor channel is presented in the description of this video. If and only if you found this video informative, make sure to drop a sub and share it with your friends. I hope you found this video informative and I will see you guys next time. Peace!